Hello children, I hope you're fine today. Let's start with our science class. Open your book on the page 109. Life on planet Earth. We will start to read. When astronauts from outer space observe our planet, they see a sphere with beautiful colors as shown in figure 6. So, figure 6 you have a, a picture of planet Earth. Now you have to find out at the top how long does the moon take to make a complete rotation around the earth. So what do you think? How long does the moon take to make a complete rotation around the earth? You will have to find out. So the moon is going to take around the uh, 27 days to make a complete rotation around the earth okay earth is the only planet in the solar system in on which life is known to exist and why is this possible because the earth is just at the right distance from the sun so that it is neither too hot nor too cold as well as water, air, and soil are present on planet Earth. Life exists almost everywhere on the planet. Life which means uh, living things, animals, plants, human beings, almost everywhere we do exist. Okay, life on planet Earth. We just read in our book that Earth is the only planet in the solar system on which life exists. The Earth was formed around 4.54 billion years ago. Very, very old. There are 7.8 billion people on planet Earth. So, 7.8 billion people. So, do you know what is a billion? A billion equals to 1,000 millions. 1,000 millions is equal to 1 billion. Billion. Now you have 7.8 billion people. So 1 billion in French. En français, c'est comment? 4 billion, c'est milliards. 7.8 milliards de personnes. Turn your page 110. You are going to observe the figure 7, Life on Earth. So, figure 7 shows places where we can see living things. We are going to identify the places together and you are going to note down in your book the names of plants and animals that you can see in each place. So the figures, let us take a look at the pictures. You have a lake, forest, a mountain, soil, cave and desert. We will start with the lake. What types of plants grow? in lakes 
as you can see it is a picture of a water lily animals will have the fish the forest plants in forest you will see a lot of trees and animals you might see in the forest for example deer in a desert what type of plants So in a desert, you might have uh, some uh, cactus plants. And as you can see in the picture, you have what type of animal? You have a sn it's a snake. Now in soil, you, don't, you do not have any plants, but instead you have roots which mean the roots of plants in soil. Animals, you have earthworms. Earthworms or ants. Cave, you have, it has been written for you, fern and bats in mountains what plants you have in mountains you might have fern or shrubs shrubs animals you might have in mountains uh, mostly birds Okay, all living things depend on each other for their survival. People and animals depend on plants. We are going to see. Page 111. We will read the questions together. You are going to answer them later. State two ways in which we depend on plants. How do we depend on plants? Plants also depend on animals. State two ways in which plants depend on animals. We are going to see this later on. Find out how bees are useful to plants, how birds are useful to plants, how worms are useful to plants and how plants are useful to monkeys, insects and lizards. So these are your homework. You are going to write down the answers. We will discuss this in a while. So for our next class, we will be doing activity for caring for planet Earth. Okay, let's move on. Okay, state two ways in which we depend on plants. So how do people depend on plants? People depend on plants for food. Obviously for food, one of the main reasons for food, you're going to get food, fresh food from plants. Also plants are going to provide us with shade Plants also help to maintain the composition of the air constant. So, uh, as you know, we need oxygen to, to survive. So, how are we going to get oxygen? It's from the plants. So, uh, that is how we people depend on plants to get oxygen, clean air, to breathe. Plants also depend on animals. How do plants depend on animals now? So plants need carbon dioxide to produce their food. So they are going to depend on animals as animals are going to release carbon dioxide 
and then the plants are going to take this carbon dioxide which which the animals release this is how they are going to produce their food let's move on how do plants depend on animals some more reasons for seed dispersal i hope you know what is the meaning of seed dispersal seed dispersal means when animals spread the seeds away from the plants so how do this happen animals of all sizes and all sorts help plants to disperse their seeds how do they do this so the animals are going to collect the fruits or seeds they're going to collect them and bury them to eat later so when they're going to bury them they they often forget about them and when they forget about the seeds and uh, 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 the other seeds in the soil what happens to the seeds the seeds are going to germinate in their new location so when they germinate they're going to produce new plants so this is how plants depend on animals I hope you'll be able to answer the questions on page 111. You will have to find out. Okay, let us move on. How bees are used are useful to plants? Bees. So you know bees help in pollination. What is the meaning of pollination? Plants need to reproduce to uh to have other new plants. So bees help in pollination, they help the plants to grow and produce food most of plants depend on bees for pollination how are birds useful to plants so birds like other animals they help in seed dispersal when they travel they take in the seeds they have eaten and disperse them by dropping the seeds onto the ground How are worms useful to plants? So worms help to make the soil good to grow healthy plants and to provide us with food. So as you know, worms, they, they, uh, they live inside the soil. So worms eat other pests as well and help to reduce the number of bacteria and microbes that the pests may bring to the plants. When worms move inside the soil, they are going to move there. They are going to make a uh, make a uh, place. Uh, come see, they are make, going to uh, make holes in the soil. So when the holes are made in the soil, there is better airflow, and the rainwater is absorbed by the soil. Okay, that's all for today. I hope you have well understood your lesson, what we just did today live on planet Earth. I hope you'll be, re you'll be revising at home and complete your questions on page 111. Do not forget also to note down the main points. Okay, so take care children. See you later.